So let's immediately start with new high yielding European stocks. The 11th stock I want to discuss is Clepier, which is another shopping center mall company with again France, Italy, Sweden, Turkey. So a very interesting Western European company. However, if you look at this map from Clepier, you can see that Eastern Europe and Turkey are the growth engines for the shopping centers. So you might go back to Atrium real estate in order to invest there, not in the developed Europe. So it depends what you see. If you like shopping centers, then it could be interesting. Perhaps the best stock in this complete list is Munich Reinsurance. Price to earnings ratio is 11, dividend yield is 4.87%, but it's a reinsurer that has shown nothing but stability over the last decade. And they are doing very, very interesting things. Let's see. So revenue, very stable over the last decade. Net income for a reinsurer, extremely stable. They have given guidance of net income of 2 billion for this year, so a bit lower. Nevertheless, it shouldn't a problem to pay the constantly growing dividend. Just a note here for data seekers. You can see that they didn't pay a dividend here for Morningstar from 2007, 2012, but they did. I'll show you later. What's very interesting is that the share number has declined for 2000, from 215 million to the current 157. So they have bought back 25% of the company in the last 10 years. That's extremely good to do, especially when your price earnings ratio is 10, which means you're buying stocks at an earnings yield of 10%. That's great. Going back to the dividend here, you can see how the dividend has been growing in the last 10 years. So it's a growth dividend company. You can expect the dividend to grow in the future, of course, you have to analyze in detail the business and what they do, but they have shown really stability over time, over two recessions in the last 10 years in Europe. So very, very interesting company to look at. Another interesting company that has a dividend of just 8.5% is Marine Harvest. It's a company, one of the biggest producers of salmon. So it has really benefited from the increased consumption of salmon of over the last 10, 20 years. The world is developing and as the world develops, more and more people eat salmon. So we can further expect growth in demand for their product. Nevertheless, it's the fishing industry, so you really have to analyze, be aware that there can be diseases, there can be market disruptions, uh, there can, everything can happen in the food industry. We know that. Nevertheless, the trend is there, the trend is strong, and people eat more and more. So, especially the expensive foods as the world develops. So, in the next 10, 20 years, this company will be double what it is now. And you get that at an 8.5% dividend yield. Sounds too good to be true. So, really go into the risks, but it's a very interesting company to own. Now, we're entering another high-yielding sector the television sector. If you listen to Gary Vaynerchuk, you will see that he says the television is the new radio. Nevertheless, television, people still watch television. I don't have one, but okay, people still watch it, still watch ads. So that should work and that should continue to be a cash flow cow. Never forget that the best investments in the last 30 years have been tobacco companies, Philip Morris and Altria. Amazing returns over the last three decades, even if the sector was in a downward trend. A company that has almost 7% yield is ProSib and Sat. So you can see that broadcasting is very, very stable. However, what is growing is digital. Digital entertainment, digital venture and common commerce. So that's growing extremely fast. So if they can continue with that, you can continue to expect a high dividend and you have to see, okay, what's the decline in TV ads? What's the speed of that decline if the dividend is sustained? For now, it looks like it will be for the long term, especially if you look at the fundamentals. Another company with a 6.55% dividend yield is Royal Dutch Shell. The main point with the bi biggest European oil producer is, is the dividend sustainable? And since oil prices have in increased about $45 per barrel, yes, the dividend is sustainable. Shell needs 10 billion to pay the dividend. However, the free cash flow after all the capital expenditures have been paid is at 20 billion now. So they have plenty of money to pay the dividend and even increase it. 
As long as oil prices stay above 40, Shell will continue to pay a dividend and it should be sustainable. So very interesting oil dividend yielder. Another oil company that has dividend 4.9% is Total. However, the dividend is not that sustainable there because the free cash flow doesn't allow to pay them a dividend. As also at these prices, so you really have to see when you invest in oil companies, what do you invest? Do you bet on higher oil prices or do you bet on the current free cash flow? What's always the risk, if you take a look here at the chart, is that oil, lower oil prices will really depress those companies. So if something happens in the next year, you can expect much, much lower stock prices. Another company that has been just declining in the last few years is RTL Group. So high yield, 8%. However, the company has been nothing but stable from a fundamentals perspective in the, next, in the last 10 years. Nevertheless, the uncertainty in the television industry, the ads, the lowered guidance for the future really push those stock prices low. However, the fundamentals stay straight and that's why the high dividends are there. Number 18, the company is Verelthave, a Dutch, again, shopping center, but, but not in the top cities, in smaller cities, mostly in, around Netherlands, Belgium, I don't know, Waterloo, it's not Brussels, it's a small city. And there they are renting out to supermarket retailers, so very stable companies. Nevertheless, the dividend is very high. Perhaps people don't see the lower risk of the company. Price to book value 0.8. The guidance is for a higher dividend, has been stable in the past. So really, if you want a Dutch real estate play, not in the top, perhaps overheated markets, then you should buy this company. And it gets you a huge dividend with positive guidance. Number 19, another television story, Sky Network. I think it's New Zealand, but it's very strong in Europe. 10.5% yield, but here you see the total television advertising revenue declining quarter over quarter. So a proper cash flow calculation is necessary to determine the value of these cheap TV operators. I will finish with a very interesting stock, Domino Pizza UK. The dividend yield is not 5%, it's 3.1% but we are looking at a very interesting growth company with a good dividend yield, a good business model, and perhaps the new McDonald's in pizzas. They're really doing well. They are entering more and more neighborhoods. They are splitting their areas and they don't see decline. They don't see cannibalization of sales. That's something very, very interesting. And the Domino UK franchise is the cheapest of, of all Domino's franchises around the world. So let's dig more into that. If you look at the metrics, they continue to grow at 10% per year. The price earnings ratio is 20, which is okay for 10% growth. The dividend yield 3.1% and it's well covered as just 50% of earnings. Domino's market strategy is to increase the number of stores and they have been doing it since 2013, splitting their territory up and that hasn't lowered sales, that hasn't cannibalized. So that's very, very interesting. It means that you really want your Domino pizza to be in your neighborhood and then you buy much more when you see it and when it's convenient. This is a very interesting business model. So their vision is to be the best pizza company in the world and in every neighbor. So a very, very interesting growth dividend to finish this list. So the risks of Europe are there, especially if you're an international investor, you have to think about currency. However, they print a lot of money. The US will still do it. They are not lowering their interest rates. We'll see what the Fed will do this week as I'm filming prior to that. Nevertheless, very interesting companies, definitely some companies to dig deeper. I would like to see what Munich Reinsurance does. Domino's Pizza is a very interesting company. So a lot of companies, Verelt have for the Dutch investors, a lot of interesting companies with high yields and misunderstood perhaps risks and rewards. So if you like the dividends, I'm sure you will find some good investments in this list. I'm looking forward to your comments suggestions, share with us. Let's create a community of profitable, low risk, high return investors. Consider subscribing if you like the content. I'm in full research mode, so you can expect much more lists, much more detailed analysis of company, and of course, general investing discussions. I'll see you in the next video.